Next up, uh, we're going to go on a journey with George. Um, and George Leith is going to talk to us a little bit about the importance of e-commerce and what that website piece looks like. Well, thanks, Craig, and thanks for painting that story of the uh, of the consumer journey. And I, I, you know, I I like to refer to it as the modern consumer journey, and uh, that's a story that you know we've been leading with and and telling to business owners all over the world throughout the uh, throughout the growth of Vendasta as as an organization. And we're excited we're excited to share it here in our uh, home province with with you folks. Um, you know, we have this major event called COVID. And um, we've been talking a lot about this need for businesses to go online and to be digital. And we just came through a period of time where some of us were not able to conduct business because we didn't have this virtual doorway buttoned up. And I uh, speak to a lot of business owners. In fact, I had the privilege of going out in the Saskatoon market a week ago and talking to, to some local business owners, a plumber and a florist that shall go nameless at this point. But it was interesting to hear some of their experiences around, boy, I sure do wish I would have had online booking. And boy, I sure do wish I would have had a better online store, especially with Mother's Day, which was one of the, and uh, you can guess that Mother's Day probably isn't the biggest day for a plumber, but it definitely is one of the biggest days for, uh, for a florist. So, you know, COVID has changed everything. Before we were looking at COVID, local businesses faced a number of challenges. And Craig kind of covered this off at the beginning. It was you know, just 56% of businesses had even claimed their Google My Business listing, which is one of the most important listing sources to be found online because of that magnitude of search traffic on Google. Um, many businesses were uncertain of e-commerce. Only 64% of small businesses have a website. And then there's this information overload of where to go. So then we have the, uh, the event that shall go nameless because everybody knows what happened. It was, you know, it was global and there has been a massive paradigm shift. So here is the biggest paradigm shift. You just have to go to the news from yesterday where Shopify and Walmart announced that they are putting together a partnership to build an online marketplace. Shopify, a great Canadian software company out of Ottawa that has grown massively during this time because they are um, helping businesses to go online. So I want you to be aware of this. It isn't just having a cart. It's the ability for consumers to find you in this online um, universe. And it's, you know, the gospel that Craig and myself, and you're going to meet Mr. Boston here in a moment. And, uh, the, you know, our, our partners like Saskatoon Media Group, they've been professing this gospel of you need to move to be digital and your business needs to be able to conduct business online. And then this thing happens. Some people call it a black swan event or, you know, COVID, I'm sure, has been called a number of names that we wouldn't even want to call it here in this broadcast. But um, it changed the world. And it is now a forcing function. You can see that e-commerce grew more in eight weeks during COVID than it did in 10 years. So I would like you to start thinking about how might we use technology to take your business, whoever you may be attending this webinar today, or if you're listening to it on the recording, how do we get your business online? And we're going to talk a little bit about that right now. Consumers are not only researching and making decisions online, but now they expect to transact online. And it has never been more important to capture this opportunity because we do have this black cloud hanging over our heads of, you know, it's been done once where we just shut the economy down. Um, could it happen again? Could it happen to your industry? Because we saw this phased approach where certain businesses were allowed to be open and others weren't. And I wouldn't want to be on the other end of that saying, oh, I got to close the doors again and I'm not able to conduct business. So 57% of consumers when spoken to said that they expect to be able to book an online appointment from a local business. That's without phoning. That's, without, that's just going to a UI on the website and booking in that appointment. So what is e-commerce? It really depends upon the type of business that you're in. You know, some of these uh, solutions like Uber Eats and Skip the Dishes, which is a great uh, software company founded in, uh, in Saskatchewan, I know here on the prairies. When, when you look at it, those restaurants are using that platform to bring a lead in and to conduct a transaction. And then we all know, or maybe you don't know, that there's a tax. That tax is paid to Skip the Dishes and Uber Eats for you to, using their infrastructure. And why do they need that money? Well, just remember when we used to watch hockey? 
Um, Skip the Dishes is one of the biggest advertising advertisers on NHL hockey. So, you know, that's what that tax is going to pay for is to drive the, the users to the, to the app and then they can find the various restaurants and services. So there, there is a tax there and it's, it's valuable because it drives traffic, but we need to be thinking about that when we make a decision of what platform we want to be on. Um, services, can I book an appointment with my plumber? Can I book an appointment with my hairstylist? Can I book an appointment with whoever? Um, does your business, could your business benefit by having that online booking and think about when the doors were closed and then think about what the world looks like today. Um, and then retail. I started selling on Facebook. I started selling in these marketplaces. Um, did you start selling through your own online marketplace, an e-commerce solution where you were able to put your inventory there, consumers were able to go in and make the purchase on their credit card, you put it in a box and you ship it to them, or you do curbside pickup, or you have it delivered to their front door with you know, the transactions happen. All of these things are now a reality and they are happening and we need to be aware of them. The we being everybody that's on this call needs to be aware of this. How could I conduct business electronically using e-commerce? Um, and it now is the norm. And then I, you know, even car dealerships, some people are like, oh, my purchase is too big for me to make that online. Well, don't tell that to Tesla because Tesla sells cars all day long without somebody coming to a showroom to make that purchase. They just go to a website and make that purchase. So, you know, you can see the major manufacturers, Ford, General Motors, Chrysler moving in that direction with their, with their dealership groups as well to capture that opportunity. So keep in mind that the new e-commerce tech solutions present some risk. And the idea of that online food ordering through a platform where you have to pay that tax, at what point does that tax become too high for your business model? And is there some business, and, and this, is the, this is the item, maybe you have a regular customer that just phones you and comes down and buys the thing. Why would you want to run it through an ordering app? Why would you want to run it through some sort of a platform? I, you know, I was speaking to that florist and they're using some sort of a platform. And on Mother's Day, 20% of the revenue that they created on Mother's Day went to that platform. And I'm sitting there thinking, I think there's some people that bought flowers from you over the years that you, you lost that money on. That was your installed group of customers. So why not have your own e-commerce platform where you're just paying the credit card transaction fee of a, of a small couple of percent rather than some large tax to an ordering platform. They have their place, don't get me wrong, but it, it is a place where it becomes very expensive. And this is what I'm hearing from people that are using those solutions. And then that booking on the lo local listing platform, you know, it's just the users that are going to that local listing platform like a Google or like a Bing or like a Facebook. So you need to have that platform that is your own, that you own. The website is your hub and you are able to conduct your e-commerce, you can conduct your online booking and it also becomes that, you know, the real, the real first reason why we built websites when they first, when the web was invented was that online brochure, it was so cool. But now it is more moved to an interactive process and what I'd like you to think about, we've got social media channels, and you know, I, I run into businesses all the time like, well, I'm on Facebook, that's good enough. Well, it's good enough for everybody that uses Facebook. But what about all the other people that don't? And by the way, every time you go to a listing source like a Google or like a MySAS411, there is a hole there for um, a website URL. Or we could think about Bing, or we could think about Yelp, or we could think about TripAdvisor if we were ever traveling again. They always reference the business's website. So website is the piece of content that you own. And my colleagues are really gonna drill into that in the next couple of sessions. So what is that best solution to meet your customers' needs? I want you to think about what Craig was talking about around that modern consumer journey. And then I want you to think about that thing that you own, that you control, the hub, your website. That is the thing that needs to be completely up to date. It is your brand. It is your place of control. This is where you're able to control the data of your customers. They transact in a database that you control. So they fill out a form fill on your website to request for more information. It doesn't go to some other provider. It comes to you directly. It now becomes your database. It's your central hub for online booking, for e-commerce, one place to manage. 
And then it helps tell your business's story. It is where you tell your unique value proposition without a bunch of competitors. When you go to your website, you're not looking at other competitors. When you go to a listing on Google and you search for something, your ad might pop up or your organic search result might pop up, but then one inch away is that competitor's ad that is running there as well. So think about that website, it is the hub. It's where you're gonna be able to conduct business online. It's where you're going to transact with the customer. It's where you're going to tell your story. It really is the place where you need to be first and the place that needs to be right all the time. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're going to now move into our other portions of the presentation.